All right, kitties. This next unit, unit nine, we're going to talk about acids and bases. And there's really nothing new here. Um, some mathematical manipulation of things we've already learned. There's a lot of solution chemistry. And uh, we'll get back to titrations and things like this. But what we're going to learn about today is what does it mean to be an acid or a base? Uh, what are logarithmic functions? Perhaps you guys have heard of that or you've talked about that before. Um, and then you've heard of pH. I'm sure we're going to talk about that. What is the pH? And there are a few little tricks in this that are mathematical. So we're going to learn about what pH is and how to convert that to a few other things. So a little history. When we talk about what is NASA to base, acid or base, there's a couple different definitions. So there's an Arrhenius definition, which is probably the simple definition that we talk about. The one we will use mostly is called the Bronsted-Lowry definition. And then there's another definition that defines them in the Lewis sense. So we'll talk about those real quick. Uh, what does it mean to be an Arrhenius acid or base? What that says is that acids produce hydrogen ions. So any soluble salt that produces hydrogen ions, because we know salts dissociate when they go into solution, and you'll notice that it says in aqueous solution, so all acids are aqueous. We've mentioned that before. Anything that produces these hydrogen ions is going to be an acid. So like HCl, I put it in water, it breaks apart, I get H and Cl. HNO3, nitric acid, I put that in water, I get hydrogens and the nitrate ion. So anything that produces those hydrogen ions is an acid. The next thing is a base. A base is simply something that produces hydroxide ions. So anything that has an OH ion, OH minus, like sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, as long as it's a soluble salt of hydroxide, it's going to produce hydroxide ions in the solution because the water is going to dissociate those. So in my example down here, I'm showing that Sodium hydroxide dissolves to form sodium and hydroxide. Hydrogen chloride would dissociate to form hydrogen and chlorine. In a solution, then it becomes hydrochloric acid. This is probably the simplest definition. So when I think about the really like in my head, when I think about an acid, I think about hydrogen ions floating around. And when I think about a base, I think about hydroxide ions floating around. So what happens if you take an acid with hydrogen ions and a base with hydroxide ions and put them together, what would you get? And of course, hydrogen and hydroxide would form water. So they're kind of opposites of one another. But that's kind of the simple definition of the acid and the base. Hydrogen ions, hydroxide ions. Whatever you have defines whether it's an acid or a base. The next definition is a little more applicable to what we're going to do. It's a little broader and a little better sense of really what's happening at the micro level, that atomic level. An acid itself is a proton donor. A base is a proton acceptor. And when I'm talking about a proton, I'm just talking about that hydrogen ion. A hydrogen is simply a proton and an electron. Take the electron away, you have a proton, a hydrogen ion. So anything that donates the hydrogen ion is the acid. Anything that accepts it is the base. But there's a give and take here. Someone's given, someone's taking in this Bronsted-Lowry definition. So in this example, hydrogen fluoride. Well, as soon as we dissolve it, it's going to become hydrofluoric acid. So the hydrogen ion is being transferred from HF to H2O. If the H goes to the H2O, it becomes H3O+. plus. Why? Because it's a positive ion, so that would increase in charge. By the way, that little guy is called the hydronium ion, H3O+. And if HF loses its hydrogen, it would become F-. So now, hydrogen fluoride is donating the hydrogen to the water. So hydrogen's acting as the acid. I'm sorry, hydrogen fluoride is acting as the acid. Water is acting as the base. But it's also a reversible reaction. We have an equilibrium going on here. So in the reverse reaction, H3O could give the hydrogen back to the fluorine to create hydrogen fluoride. The H3O plus, the hydronium ion, losing the hydrogen would become H2O. It's losing the hydrogen, thus it's acting as the acid in the reverse reaction. So in another example down here, 
Let's say I put sodium fluoride in solution. The sodium and fluoride would dissociate. Sodium is going to be a spectator here. So what does that fluoride ion do in the solution? Well, it can actually mix with the water and steal the hydrogen from the water. So if it's receiving the hydrogen, it's acting as the base. Hydrogen from the water is transferred over, making H2O the acid in this. In the reverse reaction, HF is donating its hydrogen back to the water. The donor is the acid, the acceptor is the base. Now, we have this other concept here called conjugate pairs, and it simply deals with the difference between who's losing the hydrogen, who's gaining the hydrogen, and what were they before and after. For example, what happened to the fluoride ion? It became hydrogen fluoride. So these guys right here are conjugate pairs. So this fluoride is receiving a hydrogen, so it's acting as the base. Now, in the reverse reaction, HF, is donating the hydrogen become fluoride, so it is the acid. So hydrogen fluoride and fluorine, I'm sorry, the fluoride ion and hydrogen fluoride are conjugate pairs. If I look at these two, how did H2O, what, did, what happened to H2O? It became OH. Why? It lost the hydrogen. So it's acting as an acid. OH in the reverse reaction is accepting the hydrogen, so it's acting as the base. So we would say, Fluoride and hydrogen fluoride are conjugate pairs. Water and the hydroxide ion are conjugate pairs. In this reaction, HBrs are acting with water to form the hydronium ion and bromine. So who are our conjugate pairs in this particular reaction? Well, if we look, hydrogen bromide is losing its hydrogen to form, oh, weird line, bromine. So this is acting as the acid because it's donating the hydrogen ion. In the reverse reaction, bromine's accepting the hydrogen, so that's the base. In this reaction, H2O is accepting the hydrogen, so it's acting as the base. In the reverse reaction, H3O would be losing the hydrogen, so it's acting as the acid. So those are conjugate pairs. Let's take a look at a couple examples here. So H3O, if it's an acid, what would its conjugate pair be as a base? So if H3, HNO3 loses a hydrogen, it would become what? NO3. But because that hydrogen has a plus one charge, it would end up as NO3 minus. So the acid's HNO3, its conjugate base is NO3 minus. Let's work backwards. If I have the Cl minus ion as the base, what would it become as an acid? It has to gain a hydrogen. So we're going to put a hydrogen on it and its charge has to go up by one, so it becomes just HCl. So hydrochloric acid is the acid, chloride ion is the base. HPO3 minus, that is the phosphide ion. So if that guy loses a hydrogen ion, it would become PO3, but what would happen to its charge? Well, if it was minus one in the beginning, it would end up minus two in the end, because it's lost a hydrogen ion which has a plus one charge. So that would be the conjugate pair between those two. All right, working backwards here. The carbonate ion, CO3 two minus. If it were to gain a hydrogen to become the acid, it would become what? H, CO3. But what about its charge? So it started at minus two, <coughs> excuse me, but it gained something that was positive, therefore, it would just go to minus one. So HCO3 minus would be the conjugate acid. HCN, if it loses its hydrogen, it would be CN minus. Now here's what we're doing. H2O, H2O gains a hydrogen to become an acid. So we have to put another hydrogen on there. That would become what? H3O, and we get the little positive charge because the charge has to go up. So you'll notice the acid's charge is always one greater than the base's charge in these conjugate pairs, right? The acid has one more hydrogen than the base. By the way, this little guy water, you'll notice it can actually 
gain a hydrogen ion to become the hydronium ion, or it could lose a hydrogen to become the hydroxide ion. We say that water, like a few other substances, are amphoteric. Great word, amphoteric. It can act as an acid or a base. All right, the last definition is a Lewis acid or base, and it's based on electron pairs. Acids are something that can accept an electron pair. Bases are something that donate an electron pair. So if I have like ammonia, NH3, and boron trifluoride, this pair of electrons gets donated to become a covalent bond. It's called a coordinate covalent bond because it's not sharing, like boron's not donating one and nitrogen's not donating, donating one the way we used to see covalent bonding when we did Lewis structures. Nitrogen's doing all the work. But we're not really gonna worry about Lewis acids and bases if you take your next year of chemistry, they'll probably come up. All right, some quick things about properties of acids and bases. Acids, we've seen this before, they'll react with a lot of the metals to create hydrogen gas. So think about like when we dissolved the magnesium and the hydrogen and collected the hydrogen gas. It's a simple single replacement reaction where you have an acid, something that has hydrogen bonded to something, and it reacts with a metal. The metal can steal that X and then leave the hydrogen by itself. Man, this is not drawn well. Um, but you remember seeing the hydrogen created in those reactions. Uh, they also react with carbonate ions or bicarbonate ions. Uh, our airbag lab, we took vinegar and reacted it with the sodium bicarbonate, baking soda, and filled our little bag up with carbon dioxide. That's a classic reaction. There is a pigment, plant pigment, called litmus. And you may have heard of litmus tests. Um, it's just a pigment, and there's a lot of different pigments. We'll talk about those. Um, that change color depending on how much acid or how much base is present. Litmus is a common one because if it's an acid, it will turn litmus red. If it's a base, it turns it blue. By the way, another word for base is alkaline. We'll talk about that. And I remember that because blue to red means it's an acid. Red to blue means it's alkaline. No, it's supposed to be alkaline, but it's the only way the uh, rhyme works. Um, acids also taste sour. Lemon juice, vinegar, those are acidic. You obviously know what they taste like. All right, bases. Uh, they will react with a lot of the cations we know of to produce insoluble salts. We talked about that in our solubility rules. Hydroxides are not generally soluble, and we think of bases, we think of hydroxides. So if I put metals with hydroxides, usually they precipitate out. Uh, like I said, they turn that pigment litmus blue. Bases will tend to taste bitter, and they feel kind of slippery on your hands. So if I ever get anything on my hands in the lab, I'm not sure, it's like, oh, what is that? I rub my fingers together, it's slippery, I immediately wash it off because I know it's probably a base. All right, now the fun starts. So this is what we call the ion product of water. If I have a cup full of water, it will actually dissociate into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions spontaneously. Those hydrogen and hydroxide ions will come back to form water, and there's an equilibrium established. So if we do our equilibrium expression, products over reactants, so hydrogen times hydroxide, but we know water here is a liquid, so what do we do here? It's a constant, it doesn't matter, get rid of it. So really we end up with K equaling hydrogen times hydroxide. We're calling it KW because of why? We're talking about water here. So hydrogen times hydroxide will give us this new K value. It's the product of the molar concentrations of hydrogen and hydroxide at 25 degrees for our purposes. Now, for any solution, whether it's acid or base, whether it's pure water, what they have determined is that hydrogen times hydroxide, this value of Kw, is always 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. Okay? So that's just a constant. It doesn't matter what solution you're dealing with. The hydrogen ion times the hydroxide concentration is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th, which makes sense because if it's acidic, the hydrogen ion concentration has to go up, which would mean the hydroxide ion concentration would be going down because it's not basic. And if hydroxide concentration goes up, 
hydrogen ion concentration have to decrease. So there's a balance in between those two. One's going up, the other's going down, inversely proportional. And that constant, Kw, is always 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th. And we, as we've discussed last unit, it's temperature dependent. So at 25 degrees, it's always this value. So if hydrogen equaled hydroxide, we would have a neutral solution. It's neither acidic or basic. If hydrogen ion concentration was greater than the hydroxide ion concentration, that solution would be acidic. There's more hydrogen ions present. Back to that Arrhenius definition. If the hydroxide ion concentration is greater than hydrogen, obviously it's basic. All right, so we'll explain this in a little more detail. But the pH scale works on a scale of 0 to 14. You think that 10 to the negative 14th on Kw is important right now? 10 to the negative 14th, it goes up to 14. The lowest value is 0. Right in the middle, solutions are neutral. Equal hydrogen and hydroxides. As we approach a higher hydroxide ion concentration, then it becomes more and more basic. So our hydroxide ion concentration increases in this direction. As we go this direction towards zero, that means we're increasing in its acidic property. So that means there's more hydrogen ion present. And right in the middle, like we said, they're going to equal one another.